Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Chemistry and the Properties and Structures of Matter video series. This is number 21 on electronegativity and chemical bonding. So now we've been having a look at the different types of trends or the patterns that we can see in the way elements behave chemically and also in their properties when we look at the periodic table. Now we want to try and take one of those properties in particular and see if it can help us explain some of the things that are really important in chemistry, which is the structure of different um, types of substances and how they bond together. So the first thing we want to do then is have a look at this uh, property of electronegativity. To review electronegativity, and we looked at some really nice trends, but electronegativity is just the ability of an atom to attract an electron, to become electrically negative. Okay, so the electron is what creates the negativity. So if you think of electron negativity and we just contract that a little bit, then we have an atom which becomes negatively charged by gaining an electron. So this ability to pull an electron in to actually attract an electron is one of the important determinants in helping us to identify the nature of different bonds which may form between two atoms. Now obviously um, we've looked at these types of bonds in the past but now we want to look at them in a little bit more detail. So these are two types of chemical bonds. And really, all they are is electrostatic forces of attraction. The first of these is an ionic bond. And an ionic bond forms when we have two charged atoms, two ions, which attract each other simply because opposite charges attract. So the key to ionic bonds is that opposite charges attract. And this gives us cations, which are positively charged, and anions, which are negatively charged, and the force of attraction, which holds them together. That is a bond called an ionic bond. It's created because there is a difference in electronegativity between the atom which forms the cation and the atom which forms the anion. That is, the anion has a much greater electronegativity and ability to draw in an electron, and it actually does draw that outer shell electron away from the positively, or from what will become the positively charged ion. Now sometimes there isn't as big a difference between the electronegativity values of two different atoms, and they both exert a reasonable force of attraction on electrons. In this case, both atoms will, will share that pair of electrons that forms what we refer to as a covalent bond. So again, this is still a, an electrostatic attraction, but this time the charges are not permanent but temporary when atoms are sharing electrons. Hopefully this won't be completely new to you, so let's see if we can take this a little step further. So the key things here is that as electronegativity differences increase between two atoms in a compound, the percentage ionic nature of the bond increases. We need to be aware that this is a continuum where a difference of zero at one end effectively means we have a pure covalent bond, okay? such as might occur between uh, two chlorine atoms. Obviously, the electronegativity difference between two chlorine atoms is zero. They both exert exactly the same value or exactly the same force on those electrons, and therefore there's no difference between them. All the way up to a maximum value, which is our ionic bond. Now, in actual fact, this is a continuum. So we have values that are up this end of the difference scale that are still ionic bonds. We have covalent bonds that go further and further along. In fact, we actually get to a point where we call them polar covalent, where they start to have more of a permanent kind of difference in the positive and negative nature, but haven't actually quite become ionic. This is a little bit arbitrary. Sometimes it's a, a value of around about 1.5 Pauling units. Um, and that's what separates something that is what we would regard as covalently bonded from something that's ionic. But the important thing to remember about this is that there is this charge separation. There's 
zero difference between two identical atoms, then the difference starts to increase as the electronegativity differences increase to a point where we actually find uh, much larger differences and therefore we have something which we regard as more ionic. To just quickly identify this for you, here's a table moving along period three, looking at how each of these elements would combine with chlorine. So obviously at the bottom, chlorine and chlorine, exactly the same electronegativity values. So therefore a difference of zero, we have a pure covalent bond. And as we go across this period, the ionic nature with chlorine decreases until we get to zero with sodium chloride being the most ionic nature and I guess the only other thing to say in closing here is notice that even that nature of the sodium chloride bond isn't a hundred percent these are relative um, bonding strengths and we're going to obviously need to look at these in a little bit more detail in future videos thanks for watching